Hello from San Antonio. This is Siren Tayro. Welcome back to another Pick a Card reading. Your future spouse. Subscribers request. This reading is timeless and for this reading there are four different options. Option one. It's a lipstick. Option two, my newest lipstick, Dream. Dark blue. Option three, classic red, Armani. Armani 400. And Quattro, option four. As always, timestamps will be provided. Take a deep breath and make your selection. If you chose the first lipstick, here's your reading. Starting with my Legend Arthurian deck, Five of Shields, Five of Pentacles, Cinco de Oros, Justice, La Justicia, Ace of Spears, Ace of Wands, Os de Bastos. If you're new to the channel, if you're not familiar with my reading style, I don't sugarcoat, I don't tell fairy tales, I keep it real. I'm not fatalistic when it comes to tarot. We create our own lives. All I'm doing is interpreting the cards in front of me. That's it. That's all. Reina de Bastos, Queen of Wands. Quatro de Bastos, Four of Wands. Seated de Copas, Seven of Cups. I call that Neptune Clouds of Confusion. Seven is Neptune, Pisces. Ace of Hearts, Ace of Cups, Ostacopas, Ace of Wands, Ostabastos, Ace of Diamonds, Ace of Pentacles, Ostacopas. A lot of aces up in this bitch. One, two, three, four aces. That's rare. It's also rare to have a marriage card in the center for a future spouse. Who will you marry? Reading. That's really cool. Technically, two marriage cards. Justice can be about marriage. Justice and four of wands. This is really strong. Okay, so if you're watching this and you have a certain person in mind, you're not going to marry that person. This is someone you've never met. This is totally new, fresh energy. This is not an ex. This is not someone coming back into your life. This is someone you have not 
met yet. Someone you're probably not currently talking to. So, usual caveat, it's a pick a card reading. Heavy emphasis at this channel on entertainment purposes. I'm reading for a global audience, da 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 Okay, so, some of you watching right now, you could be struggling. You could be struggling financially. Um, maybe you're feeling really pessimistic. You're feeling like you'll never get married. Maybe you've had some bad experiences recently and you're thinking, it happens for some people, but it's not going to happen for me. So you're going to have to flip the script. You're going to have to, and I say this all the time. I say it in personal readings. I say it here at Extra Basic Tarot. I say it a lot. Um, we have to find the best cards in the deck in ourselves before we can find it in a relationship. It's an inside job. So if you really strongly desire something like the Four of Wands, which I see as the ultimate marriage card. It's my favorite marriage card in the deck. If you want something as blissful and glorious and deeply gratifying as the Four of Wands, you're going to have to <clears throat> somehow, some way, find the Four of Wands in yourself. You're going to have to find a way to... Um, really enjoy and appreciate your life and not feel like you're lacking anything. Uh, you can't be stuck in that rut of thinking that your life's going to be so much better when the right person comes along because that's simply not reality. So this person, your future spouse... This person is going to be extremely energetic, extroverted, proactive. You're never going to have to wonder where you stand with this person because they're going to make it abundantly clear. They're going to pursue a relationship with you with passion. There's not going to be any ambivalence. Okay. So... <clears throat> that whole hot and cold thing, that ambivalence thing, that ghosting thing that is so prevalent, it's so common, you're not going to experience any of that bullshit with your future spouse. Um, this person is very ambitious. This person is very goal-oriented. They go after what they want. There's this purity, this innocence almost. Um, when they see you, when they meet you, it could be that mythical love at first sight experience that's rare. Not lust at first sight, but love at first sight. There's going to be this instant connection, so... This will probably be a soulmate experience. Um, there will be this familiarity, this instant kinship that is rare. Um, they're going to meet you and they're going to just know this is someone. I mean, right away, they're going to know on some level. This is someone I could share the rest of my life with. So it's very romantic. This person probably has a lot of cardinal energy in their natal chart. So in Western astrology, the cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. This person could have Sun in Aries, Cancer rising, Moon in Taurus, 
they could have a lot of stuff in the first house, the house of Aries. They could have a Mars that makes a lot of aspects. And what that means is what I've already said. This person um, takes action. They take the initiative. They're very energetic, very confident. They're very good at communicating. Um, I can see this person having a really high-level career. They could be a surgeon, a lawyer, uh, an entrepreneur. They could own their own business. Whatever they do, they're good at it. They excel. They're successful. But they're not especially materialistic. I can see them being in a minimalist kind of house where there's not a lot of furniture, not a lot of clutter. I don't see them collecting things. Uh, I can see this person running, jogging, working out in the gym, playing tennis. Uh, they take very good care of themselves. They're very much into their physicality. They're into clean eating. Um, and they have a really strong group of friends. Their friends are like their second family. Um, for some reason, I'm seeing John F. Kennedy Jr. He just popped into my head. John F. Kennedy Jr. was a Sagittarius. Um, and he was very athletic. I think that's a Kennedy thing. The Kennedys were all athletic. But... Um, this person loves to travel, and I'm just getting this fearless, badass energy. Badass and fearless, but not foolish. They don't scatter their energy. This person's not promiscuous. Uh, they, they're definitely monogamous. When they're in a relationship, they're in a relationship. They're not talking to other people. They're not fucking around. They are loyal honest. Um, this person loves music. When you're getting to know each other, I can see them sending you playlists. They could play an instrument. I can see this person strumming a guitar maybe or playing a piano. This person has class. They are definitely classy, not trashy. So... Yeah, quality. This person is quality. Good hygiene. Uh, very good mind. Above average IQ. Very sharp, witty conversationalist. They have a really good sense of humor. They smile. They laugh. They're in a good place. They're very healthy. Very high vibration. And I can see you meeting this person in the spring. Airy season, which begins in late March. So, timeless reading. You could be watching this in 2024, 2025, if this channel is still up. But I see you meeting this person in the spring. Uh, I don't feel like it's going to be long distance. Of course, it's always a possibility. But I feel like this is going to be someone that you meet in your day-to-day -day life. Could meet this person through your friend group. So, yeah. That's what I see for pile one. I hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. All the info's in every box. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. And if you chose the second lipstick, here's your reading. Starting with the Legend Arthurian, we have the Two of Spears, Two of Wands, those are the Bustos. Three of Spears, Three of Wands, Thrace the Bustos. Three of Swords, Thrace the Espadas. Two is Cancer, Three is Sagittarius. I'll call out a possible astral combo when all the cards are down. 
Oops. Trace the Bastos again. Ocho de Bastos, Eight of Wands, call that the sex card. Seat of the Oros, Seven of Pentacles. Jack of Spades, the Knight of Swords, Caballo de Espadas. Nine of Cups, Clyde of Copas, and the Queen of Cups, Queen of Copas. That's cool when that happens, when you see the signifiers together like that. Okay. So there could be a bit of an age gap. You could be a few years older than your future spouse. Or you could be the same age and you could have two sons. Either, both. I do feel like your future spouse is going to have a lot of fire in their natal chart. One possible astral combo for your future spouse, they could have sent a Sagittarius, Sagittarius rising, moon and Scorpio, one possibility of many. You're going to feel unsure, insecure in the beginning. Um, you may feel like this person is out of your league. You may feel like they would never be interested in you. You may feel like in the beginning this person just wants sex because they're going to come on really strong. This person is very sexual. Very strong libido. I'm seeing an extrovert. I'm seeing someone who has confidence. This is similar to pile one. If this is a man, I would say he's probably an alpha male, a so-called alpha male. Good body, good looking, takes excellent care of himself. Um, regardless of gender, this person takes good care of themselves. They're a type A personality. They go hard. Uh, they work hard and they play hard. <clears throat> and it's like I was saying for pile one. I don't sugarcoat my readings in case you're new to this channel. You're not familiar with my reading style. <clears throat> I'm very blunt. I don't tell fairy tales. This is not Disney, Pixar. Um, all of that is just to say that you know, I'm, I'm talking about real life here. It's a tarot reading and it's a pick a card reading, but I'm bringing my life experience to every reading that I do. I'm 50 years old, and so I'm not about the nonsense. And all of that is just to say, this could start off third party. It could start off when you and this person meet, they're with someone else, you're with someone else, making it multiple party, but... um. There could be some drama and some conflict in the beginning. Or it could be that you just feel like this person's out of your league. You may feel like you're not this person's usual type. You may find yourself going down the rabbit hole when you first start talking, looking at their social media, and you're just kind of starstruck and maybe a bit intimidated. So... It may be a while before you marry this person. So from when you first start talking to when you actually get married, it, it may be a process, a long drawn out process. This is not the energy of two people who meet, go on a few dates, fall madly in love, get engaged and get married within six months or something crazy like that. This is not 
Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson, you know, meeting in Mexico and having sex and doing drugs and getting married on the beach after three days of fucking and getting high, whatever. This is not that. This could be someone that um, you're acquainted with for years before you even become intimate. So it could be long distance, you meet on social media, you talk, there's interest, but then there's some backpedaling, maybe some ghosting because there was someone else or you was, I just, I see some drama and conflict. Um, to have three of swords over seven of pentacles, yeah. And to have what I call the sex card, the eight of wands in the middle. I can see this person, when you meet, they could very well still be sowing their wild oats. So, if you're older like I am, you know, your 40s, 50s, older, you might want to pick another pile. Because when you get to a certain age, you don't really have any tolerance for this. You know, it's fine in your 20s and 30s. We get to a certain age and you feel like, you know what? I've paid my dues. If it can't be easy, if it can't be smooth, if it can't be drama-free, then I'm not interested. And I definitely see drama for pile two. So... Yeah, you could be on different continents. You could be in Australia. This person could be in the States. This person could be in the UK. You could be in Tokyo, Asia. I don't know. But distance is a very strong possibility. Meeting online, very strong possibility. The sex will be amazing. But it doesn't look like you and this person have much in common the strongest thing here that I'm seeing is the sexual attraction. We have all this fire. Um, and when you, when you and this person do decide to marry each other, I can see you going off to Vegas. Something like that. You go to Vegas, you go to Reno... Uh, you go to the courthouse. I'm not seeing a big church wedding. I don't feel like you and this person are especially religious. You may not be religious at all. You may not be spiritual. You may be atheist or agnostic. I don't know. Um, to be blunt, I just see a lot of sex for pile two. I don't know what you talk about. I'm not really seeing two people who have in-depth conversations. You could have very different friend groups. So, yeah, I, I can't tell a fairy tale. I just, I can't anyway, but especially looking, looking at these cards, I'm not getting Little Mermaid or Aladdin or Beauty and the Beast vibes. So... That's what I see. That's what I have. Heavy emphasis of this channel on entertainment purposes. I'm always available for personal readings. All the info's in every box. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. And if you chose the classic red, Armani 400, Pile 3, here is your reading. Starting with the Legend Arthurian, we have, ooh, the dreaded Seven of Swords, Siete de Espadas, the Judgment, El Juicio, and Six of Spears, Six of Wands, Seis de Bastos. It's like I was saying for Pile 1, Pile 2, I don't tell the fairy tales at this channel. I'm not a subscriber to the whole toxic positivity thing. I'm not about delusion or fairy tales. I'm not into Disney Pixar. I'm 50 years old. I've lived a lot of life. I've had a lot of relationships. And I have a Taurus MC, so 
I have no choice but to keep it real. Even though this is a pick a card reading, reading for a global audience. Da -da 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 I'm not fatalistic when it comes to tarot. We create our own lives. Says the Oros, Six of Pentacles. Aste Oros, Ace of Pentacles. Single Day Spotted, Five of Swords. Three of Swords, Thrice Day of Spotted. The Joker, addicted to us. I don't know what kind of mood I was in when I wrote that. That was a while ago. Um, but I keep the jokers in the deck. They amplify the cards that they touch. Ace of Swords, Ace the Espadas. Okay, so... What I'm seeing here... Oh, God. I'm exhausted just looking at this spread. But what I'm seeing here is an on-again, off-again relationship all around the Dan Mulberry bush. Block, unblock. I can't stand you. Just joking. Let's get together. Let's meet at Applebee's and work shit out over some frozen margaritas, something like that. Um, I'm looking at the stove clock. It's 401. Oh, God, that's five. Avoid the fives. Well, the fives are part of life. We all deal with the fives. Five is Mercury, which rules Gemini and Virgo. It's a conflict of energy. Um, five of Swords. So, what I see here, although we have these two aces, the Ace of Pentacles in the center and the Ace of Swords, this is not someone new. This is someone you have history with. This could be an ex coming back. You reconcile, you do the thing, you get married. Um, probably, if you chose pile three, you've been through it a few times. This may be your second, third, fourth, fifth marriage. My dad's been divorced five times. My mom's been divorced. Well, she's on her third and final marriage. Anyway, um, I'm seeing someone who has had a lot of life experience. This is not the energy of someone who's just starting out with stars in their eyes. This is not a 20-year-old, someone who's never had their heart broken. You probably both, you and your future spouse, you have quite a lot of baggage. You've lived life. You've experienced a lot. You've had your hearts broken. Uh, you trigger each other. You challenge each other. But you have tremendous respect for each other. Um, and ultimately, you're going to have victory. You're going to get it right. But there are some things to work out for Pile 3. Communication definitely has to be cleaned up. So it could be that you and this person had some drama and conflict when you were younger and then you met up again, maybe on Facebook, some kind of social media when you were older and more mature. It's promising having the Ace of Pentacles in the center and it's next to the Six of Pentacles. That's really good. And then to have the Six of Wands in the last row. So you and this person could reconnect, reunite in Gemini season, which starts in late May, whatever year. This is not about when you're going to meet this person, but I can see you meeting or reconnecting in Gemini season. Um, and it could be, like I said, you were together, you broke up, and then you reconnect on social media. They could slide into the DMs and connect with you like that, and then you meet in person, and then you get married pretty quickly after you reconnect. That's what I'm seeing for Pile 3. Um, you may have cheated on them before, or they cheated on you. So when you reconnect, 
when you meet again, when you reunite, the wounds are not fresh. There's There's been some time. You've had time to deal with it, to process whatever happened before. But this is strong X energy for pile three. A possible astro combo for this person, your future spouse, they could have Sun and Taurus, Sagittarius rising, Moon and Gemini. It's one possibility of many. Um... I feel like you and this person don't have the best synastry. Probably not a lot of trines. Sextiles, I find the trines and sextiles to be boring. I talk about all of this. I talk about synastry in my astrology video I did a few days ago. The only astrology video you need to watch or something like that. Clickbait title, but uh, I've got a few videos at this channel talking about synastry. I go more in depth at Patreon. But I prefer the squares and oppositions because I have so many in my chart. Everyone's different. But uh, I feel like in your synastry, you and your future spouse, there are quite a few squares and oppositions, not a lot of trines and sextiles. This is not the easiest energy. It's not happy-go-lucky. Matt. The name Matt just popped into my head. Matt, Matthew, Mark, um, yeah, an M name, Mitch, Miami, a city that starts the letter M, um, shit, I don't know, Maui, I just made a red bubble cell. Uh, someone bought a Maui print that I made. It's a beach photograph that I made years ago. It's weird. Anyway, that's what I see for pile three. I'm always available for private readings. All the info's in the box. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. And if you chose Quattro, number four, gorgeous nude. Here's your reading. Starting with the legend Arthurian, we have the Two of Swords, Dos de Espadas, Temperance, La Templanza, Four of Swords, Quattro de Espadas. Deus de Copas, Ten of Cups. El Mundo, the world, the fixed modality, Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and so did they Oros, Page of Pentacles. When you meet this person, your future spouse, you're going to think they aren't interested. You're going to think they're not interested. Oh, God. I'm trying to move this chair and think on different levels. It's hard. When you first start talking to this person, your future spouse, you may think they are not interested in you. Because they are a very intense introvert. They're not that great at small talk or socializing, period. Not that talkative. Ten of Wands, they is the Boston. Joker, missing you. I keep the jokers in the decks. They amplify the cards that they touch. Four of Wands, another marriage card. Quatro de Bastos. Four marriage cards. Ten of Cups in the first row. Four of Wands in the last. That is beautiful. That is fucking gorgeous. Okay. Um, you're going to get frustrated in the beginning. because you're very eager to start the rest of your life with this person. Maybe you've been waiting for a while. You've been waiting for this ideal relationship. Then you meet this person and you're thinking, okay, perfect, let's do it already. Let's say the vows, let's buy the balloons, the flowers, the cake, whatever. 
Um, maybe if you're a woman, you're watching your biological clock is ticking and you want to get married and you want to have babies. Okay. But this person is moving at a snail's pace. Um, introvert, very cautious. This person is not that confident. Um, they're reliable, trustworthy, but not the best looking not the best looking and not the fastest moving. So this is not about meeting someone on Instagram and just saying, wow, that person is so hot. Oh my God, I wanna have babies with this person. You're going to know pretty soon after meeting, talking that you want to be with this person, but it's not really about their looks. It's more about um, the way they make you feel and you feel like you can trust them. Okay. You like this person's quiet, humble energy. This person's not full of shit. They're honest. They're hardworking. They have a very good heart. Um, but they came from humble beginnings and they're not that sure of themselves. Maybe they didn't go to college. They're not that educated and, um, they don't feel like they have that much to contribute. So I can see them being very, um, very nondescript on social media. They're not one of those who just has a ton of friends. They're not someone who's just always posting on Twitter, X, Facebook, Instagram. They're not showing off. They don't have a showy kind of energy. They're very humble, very down to earth, very laid back. Trustworthy, but not the most exciting person. Some would dismiss this person as boring. Um, they're not a talker. They're not talkative. If this person is addicted to anything, it's work. So yeah, many people would dismiss this person as boring. Uh, this is a good person. This is someone who's not going to cheat on you. Someone you don't have to worry about. Okay. But it's going to be frustrating because it's going to take quite some time for this person to really open up to you and reveal who they are. So this person is shy. Um, and I can see this person meditating. They need to recharge. They don't like to be in social situations. They don't like to be on social media that often. I could keep talking and I would just repeat myself, but you get the gist. Um, possible astral combo for this person. They could have Sun and Capricorn. Libra rising. Moon and Leo. One possibility of many. If you want drama or if you want a lot of excitement, if you want a soap opera or you want a rom-com starring Drew Barrymore, whatever the fuck, if you want something more exciting, then definitely not your pile. Um, I see a happy marriage. I see a marriage that lasts, but it's going to take some time to get to the wedding, okay? This person's going to reveal themselves to you in layers. They're going to open up slowly. Maybe they had trauma in their childhood. I don't know. Um, not the easiest person to get to know. 
So yeah, in the beginning, you may feel like this person's not interested because they're so minimal. They're so minimal in their communication. That's what I see for pile four. And that does conclude this pick a card reading. Thank you all so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. Sending you all massive love and light from San Antonio.